Today, I am going to explain the American science fiction comedy film called Idiocracy. Spoilers ahead. The premise of the movie is set in the year 2005. At the beginning of the movie, it is narrated that human evolution is at a turning point. Most science fiction theories predict that the future of humans is going to be more advanced, with smarter people. But, because humans are already on top of the food chain, their evolution takes a turn for the worse. People grow dumber with time. In such conditions, the U.S. Army librarian, Corporal Joe Bowers, is approached by his seniors, proposing he be a part of an important experiment. Joe, who had planned to stay a librarian until retirement, is annoyed, but he has to follow orders. Then, we are taken to a private meeting between some high-ranking military officials. General Collins presents his idea to the other officers. He says that the scientists have invented a human hibernation pod that can preserve human beings for an indefinite amount of time. It is so humans can preserve their finest men at their prime and revive them in the time of need. They have chosen Joe to be the first test experiment because he is the most average man in the military and has no immediate family. Similarly, they also required a woman for the experiment, but they didn't have a perfect fit in the military. Hence, Collins chooses a prostitute named Rita. He shows the officers pictures of him and Rita's manager, Upgrade, partying together. But it makes everyone in the room uncomfortable. He ends the presentation by saying that the subjects will be put into the pods tomorrow, and the experiment will go on for a year. Since the experiment is highly classified, the officials present in the room aren't allowed to share the information with anyone. The next day, Joe and Rita are together in a waiting room. Joe introduces himself and asks Rita what sector she is from. Not wanting to reveal that she is a prostitute, Rita says that she is a painter. Then, both of them are put on IV and into two human hibernation pods. Rita freaks out and tries getting up, but Joe assures her the scientists know what they are doing. He tells her they will only be inside for a year, so it will be perfectly fine. At last, the two are sealed inside the pods. However, things start to go wrong when Officer Collins is arrested as part of an attempted prostitution ring. Along with him, Upgrade is also arrested for being the ringmaster of the prostitution ring. Hence, now no one is there to look after the hibernation pods. Because of the scandal, the military base is closed and the building the pods are in is demolished. Joe and Rita lie dormant in the pods as the years pass by. Although things look bad for the two, they are even worse for mankind. Humans begin to evolve into stupider beings at a frightening rate. The chart of average intelligence goes downhill with time. Some people have high hopes that genetic engineering and science will be able to correct this trend of evolution. But the smartest scientists in the world are focusing on stupid experiments, like trying to reverse hair loss or prolong erections. In other words, they're doing God's work. In the meantime, the population explodes, and intelligence continues to decline until the year 2505. All these years, people aren't able to solve basic human problems, like garbage disposal. So, the garbage has been stacked for centuries, with no plan whatsoever. This creates the Great Garbage Avalanche of 2505. And one day, a massive garbage landslide causes Joe's hibernation pod to end up in a random house. Joe gets out of the pod, dizzy and confused. The person in the house is named Frito Pendejo. Frito completely ignores the pile of garbage and the stranger in his house and continues watching weird shows on TV. The frame is littered with advertisements and the show consists entirely of a guy getting kicked in the nuts. This is honestly more intelligent than keeping up with the Kardashians. He only gets up to ask Joe not to make a noise. We see that his couch also has a toilet, so he wouldn't have to get up time and again. He then kicks Joe out of the window. The outside world seems confusing to Joe, and he says to himself, so much has changed in just a year. But little does he know, he has entered the year 2505. He sees a group of people by the side of the road who talk in slang and grunts. Joe is able to understand them, but when he speaks like his normal self, they call him slurs and chase him away. A confused Joe also feels dizzy, so he decides to go to a nearby hospital. There, he goes to the reception and tells the receptionist he is from the army. The woman doesn't understand anything, and just presses one of the many buttons on her desk. A voice asks Joe to proceed to the diagnostic area on the right. Confused, he goes to drink some water from a water fountain, but it supplies an energy drink called Brondo instead of water. When Joe asks a bystander where he can drink water, the man laughs at Joe for wanting to drink something they use for toilets. Then, he goes to the diagnostic area where he has to put plugs into his mouth, ear, and anus. 
The health professional mismatches the plugs that he already put into those areas. A disgusted Joe completes the procedure and is sent to a doctor. While waiting, he sees the date 2505 written on a magazine, but dismisses it as a misprint. The doctor arrives and answers all of Joe's questions about his health with phrases like kick ass. He also declares Joe is retarded and asks him to pay a fee of $5 billion. Just then, Joe notices 2505 written on the bill. He finally realizes that he has actually been inside the pod for 500 years. Joe almost doesn't believe it, and goes to the window, only to be surprised to see the current condition of the city. Meanwhile, the doctor freaks out because Joe doesn't have a citizen tattoo on his wrist. Joe panics and runs away from the hospital, while the doctor calls the police on him for not paying his bills. A voice narrates that Joe has woken up to a world in crisis. The economy is in deep neglect, a great dust bowl has ravaged all food supplies, and the number one movie in the country is called Ass. He goes to watch the movie that won a bunch of Oscars, including Best Screenplay, only to stare at someone's ass for 90 straight minutes. At night, he is arrested for being unscannable and taken to a court. There he is given a lawyer who happens to be Frito Pendejo, the guy that Joe met first. Frito makes fun of him as everyone in the court laughs. Joe presents his case sensibly and explains why he is unscannable, but the lawyers and judge just laugh at him. At last, the judge declares him guilty and sentences him to jail. Meanwhile, Rita also comes out of the pod and is trying to contact her manager and boyfriend, Upgrade. She is unsuccessful as the phone asks her for $2,000 to contact him. Just then, she is approached by a man who she tricks to get his money. At the same time, Joe is taken to an automated tattoo place where the citizens are given the identification tattoo that makes them scannable. The machine asks his name, but Joe starts to explain that he is not sure what is going on. Because of this, the machine reads his name as not sure and tattoos it on his wrist. Then, he is taken to an aptitude and IQ test and asked questions about basic addition. Joe answers all of them correctly and is surprised to see people around him not being able to identify shapes. After that, he is taken to the prison. He finally begins to realize that everyone in the current world is stupid. So, he tells the guard he is supposed to get out of jail today. The stupid guard lets him walk away, but the alarms catch that an inmate has ran away, and the police chase him down the streets. Joe somehow gets away from them, and goes to Frito's place again. He believes that someone has created a time machine within the past 500 years, and asks Frito's help in getting to one. Frito doesn't agree to help Joe, but Joe tricks him by saying that he will give him $8 billion for his help. Eventually, Frito reveals that he knows where the time machine is, because Frito likes money. Just then, the police knock on the door, looking for Joe. The two run away through the window and drive to the museum. On their way, they meet Rita, who is still scamming the same guy. Rita gets in the car and is worried that Upgrade will come looking for the money she owes him, still oblivious that he is already dead. As they drive, something from outside the car scans Joe's wrist, and the police are notified of his location. The car's battery runs out, and they get out of it. Right after, the police approach the car and fire at it. Soon, a bunch of people join and start fighting each other in excitement. Joe, Frito, and Rita run away in hopes of getting to the time machine. Joe then takes the two to Costco, which is now the center of all trades. He even claims to have studied law in Costco. As they wait for the metro, Rita goes to the bathroom. Before she returns, Joe's wrist is accidentally scanned again, and the whole place is alerted of a criminal's presence. The metro arrives, and Frito gets on it, but Joe waits for Rita, only to be caught by the police. However, this time he is taken to the White House, instead of prison. There, a confused Joe meets the President Camacho and his secretaries. Camacho makes fun of him, saying that he thought Joe's head would be bigger because he is smart. It turns out that the IQ test Joe took in prison surprised everyone because he had the highest score they had ever seen. Hence, because of his intelligence, the president makes Joe the new Secretary of Interior. To Joe's surprise, they also declare him the smartest man in the world. Everyone then goes to the House of Representin, where the president announces that the problems of food scarcity and the Dust Bowl will be solved by their new Secretary of Interior, Mr. Not Sure. He also promises to pardon Joe's prison time if he solves the problem. After that, a cabinet meeting is held, where the secretaries ask Joe to say something smart. Joe says some random complicated words, making them believe that he is, in fact, smart. Then, Joe asks Frito to draw a map of the location of the time machine until he can distract the secretaries. Later, he takes them to a field where crops are supposed to be grown. He also asks them to get Rita because she might be able to help them with the crops. Frito secretly hands Joe the map. 
At the same time, Rita arrives there. Joe takes her aside, planning to run away using the map. But his plan fails when he sees that Frito's map is just a couple squiggly lines. Then, Joe realizes that people have been watering the crops with the energy drink, Brondo. He holds a cabinet meeting to start using water instead of Brondo. The secretaries think his idea is atrocious, because Brondo has electrolytes. So, instead of reasoning with them, he simply tells them that he can talk to the plants, and they want water. Joe doesn't know that the energy drink has caused salt to develop over topsoil, which killed the plants and caused the Dust Bowl. Hence, he is actually solving their problems. For a few days, everything goes as planned. But soon, Brondo's stock drops to zero because of the decreased production. This leaves half the population unemployed. They riot outside the White House, in a scene that eerily foreshadows the stupidity of the United States. The news announces that Joe is taken to court for making people unemployed and is proven to be guilty. He is sentenced to one night in rehabilitation. In the New World, rehabilitation is when a criminal is chased by a large monster truck in an arena as an audience cheers for the truck. The rehabilitation mostly ends with the criminal's death. Joe is taken to the arena while Rita sadly returns to the White House, ready to go to the time machine with Frito. The rehabilitation is broadcasted on national television. Joe is chased by a massive killing truck as he drives around in a small car with a dildo strapped to the hood. Just then, Rita notices a rose plant growing outside. She realizes that Joe's idea to water the plants has worked and asks Frito to take her to the arena. She plans to broadcast the crops on the Jumbotron so Joe's punishment would be pardoned. Meanwhile, Joe is still trying to save his life from the death truck. Rita reaches there on time and bribes a cameraman to go with Frito and film the growing crops. She then goes to the monitoring room and takes over the control panel. Frito finally gets to the field and films the crops. The clip is broadcasted on the large screen. Seeing this, President Camacho saves Joe from being killed and pardons his punishment, making the crowd erupt in cheers. Now, everyone is at a frat party in the White House. Rita reveals that she doesn't want to return home because she likes the future better. Joe is surprised but doesn't force her to come with him. The two say their final goodbye. But before Joe leaves, the president calls him on stage and declares him the new vice president. Everyone looks at Joe with hopeful eyes, making him agree to stay in 2505. Then, one person calls the time machine a stupid ride anyway. Frito takes a confused Joe to the machine, and it is finally revealed that the time machine is actually just a children's ride. The scene cuts to a few months later, when Joe is elected as the President of the United States, and Rita becomes his wife and the First Lady. Under his leadership, a new era dawned, and people hope that humans can once again become smart. He even has three kids with Rita, who are said to be the smartest kids in the world.